Hey, Michael. How's Marcy? <sighs> she made it through surgery. We were able to stop the internal bleeding. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, she's doing a lot better. She just, just woke up. So what's the problem? Michael, talk to me. I need to see her. You know, I, I need to explain what happened with that intern at Rhodey's. Okay, so what are you waiting for? Her family's in there with her right now. I can't believe you. You came all this way. What, what am I? Chopped liver? <laughs> <laughs> you practically live here, Ronnie. Of course we can, Marcy. Nothing could keep us away. James says his love. He's uh, stuck in Atlanta on business. And uh, Jerry's out west at some firefighter convention. He made us promise to call uh, and give him updates on the hour. Fine. Really. It's okay. Fine. Marcy, you could have been killed in that accident. There was no accident. Somebody hit you and just left you to die. Doctor, all you want. No, I want to know if she's okay. Oh, Todd, the longer we stand here, the less okay she's going to be. Now, I have decided on oysters Rockefeller for an appetizer. How does that sound? Oh, listen to me. This is very important. I can't give you a baby. Well, sure you can. No, I'm sorry. Sorry? Yes, I... I've been lying to you. We're gonna find out who did this to you, Marcy. I promise. Hey, Ron. Marcy just got out of surgery. Yeah. I think we should go. He's right. You need to get some rest. Hi, Dad. Hey. Is Michael here? Yeah, he's he's right outside. Been there the whole time. I want to see him. Listen, thanks for stopping by, John, but uh, you, you don't need to stay, you know? No, I'll, I'll hang out until you get a chance to talk to Marcy. Seriously, John, I don't need my big brother to babysit me. You sure about that? Just go, John. All right, well, I do have a few things I have to do. You got a new case? Personal. I've got some big decisions to make. I'll call you later. Tom McBain said I wanted to see you. That's the only reason I'm here. I never told him that. Then why would he say you did? Why would John want me anywhere near you? Don't you think she needs to know the truth? No. No, you can't tell her. She believes she betrayed Chris's memory by letting a stranger take his place. She deserves to know that the man she welcomed into her life is the husband that she loved. Are you going to answer me? Why would John want me anywhere near you?
those lousy, no good, low down creeps. What? I have a good mind to call the neighborhood watch and tell them they are so fired, man. What are you talking about? My car, my car was stolen. It's parked right over there. I'm tough and gone. I gotta call the cops. Roxanne, your, your, your car was not stolen. It, it was towed. I, I saw them towing it away about a half an hour ago. It was towed? I didn't call it a tow truck. My little pink caddy is running like a dream. You were parked in the no parking zone. Oh, crud. Okay, where do I go and pick it up? Ah, I think they usually take it down to that garage on our Cedar Avenue. Oh, man, it's so cold outside. Look, I want to tell you I'm really sorry about your mojito. You know, who would think that there'd be two such sexy hunks in the world? All right, let me get my keys out. I think you better think about calling a cab. Huh? Oh, yeah, right. See ya. I miss you, Christian. It's like losing you all over again. I, um... I don't know why Big Bang would ask you to come down here. Well, I guess he thinks that there's still some things that I need to say to you. But he's wrong. I don't. Because what could I possibly say to the man who has hurt me more than anyone has ever hurt me in my entire life? I never meant to hurt you. What the hell did you think you were doing? Pretending to be my husband. Crawling into my bed. Into my life. Making a joke out of my marriage. You know what? No, John was right. There is something left that I need to say to you. What? You wanted me to fall in love with you? You tried to make me fall in love with you. But guess what? It didn't work. Sorry. Because all I feel for you is deep, dark, all-consuming hatred. Well, what are you saying, Todd? What did you lie to me about? I can't give you a baby because I had a vasectomy. After Jack was born. Well, if you had a vasectomy, why didn't you say that the first time I asked you to make a baby with me? <sighs> I didn't want to upset you. You gotta admit, Margaret, you get a little crazy when you get upset. No, I am not crazy. That is a very cruel, very ugly word. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm afraid it's still the truth. I, I can't have a baby with you, uh, not tonight, not ever. This is Margaret, Peggy. <laughs> Why else would I make up so many excuses to not make love to a woman like you? You know, this whole thing, you dragging me up here and wanting me to give you a baby. I know this has been my fault. Because <laughs> I pursued you, didn't I? And I played on your feelings, on the feelings of a warm, tender, beautiful woman. You made me fall in love with you. Yes, I did. I'm so sorry. You know, that's why I would never... I would never press charges on you for any reason. Just, you know, let me go and tell me where Blair is and... and... Let's forget this. Let's forget this whole month that I have, you know. What do you say? What are you doing? I'm checking for vasectomy scars. How is she? Uh, pretty good. She's still a little, a little weak by that. Well, I'd say that's to be expected. Um, I, 
I'd really like to see her. Yeah, sorry about that, Michael. I don't think that's such a good idea. Excuse me? From what I understand from Marcy's agent, you're the reason she got hit by the car in the first place. Dad, Marcy just asked to see Michael. Michael took care of her at the scene of the hit and run. He got her to the hospital. She might have died if it wasn't for him. Look, you're right, Mr. Walsh. It, it was my fault that Marcy ran out in the street and got hit. But what she saw, me kissing that, that intern, it, it wasn't what it looked like, okay? It didn't mean anything. It did to Marcy. If I could take it back, if I could change everything, if I could stop Marcy before she ran out, if I, if I could stop her and, and explain everything to her, I would, but I can't go back. All I can do is tell her how sorry I am and try to make it up to her. Please, Mr. Walsh, I need to see her. Just for a few minutes. I need to make it right. What's, what's that? What's going on? She's, she's crashing. No vasectomy scars. You must have had an excellent surgeon. Yeah, I had the best. Oh, lies, lies, lies. You were right, Todd. You did lie to me about something, about this. Listen, Peg. You never had a vasectomy. And unless you give yourself one before dinner, you better get used to the idea of impregnating me tonight. Otherwise, Blair is going to stay in that trunk until she dies of starvation or hypothermia or lack of oxygen. Take your pick. <laughs> oh, imagine when someone finally does open that trunk and there's Blair, a human bleached blonde popsicle. Oh. <laughs> now back to my oysters. <laughs> you never had a vasectomy. And unless you give yourself one before dinner, you better get used to the idea of impregnating me tonight. Oh. Oh, there's got to be another way. chest compressions, one amp epi. I need a spinal syringe and a 60cc syringe. Thank you. What's happening? The sac around her heart is filling with blood. It's not beating properly. We have to drain it. Don't let her die, my dear. Please. Michael, stop! What? She's in cardiac arrest due to cardiac tamponade. You haven't been officially reinstated yet. I'll take it from here. Get it up. Okay, resume CPR. Get me in an ultrasound. Get that needle away from him. Look, you have to let me help. Now! Get out or I'm going to have security throw you out. Clear the room! I'm glad that John told me that, um... The man that came to Landview was not the imposter, and that I really was Christian. The love of my life. Mm -hmm. But, uh, 
You know, I'm, I'm gonna stand by him while he's in Statesville. I mean, forever if I have to, okay? I won't desert him. It's just so hard. Oh, I know, honey, I know. Sleeping alone. Reaching for him. Night after night. Year after year. I'm going to get out of here, and I'm going to find you, Margaret, and I'm going to wrap my hands around your squat. Squeeze your eyes off, have you hear me? The oysters are in the broiler. Right. I was thinking about a main course. Well, I was thinking steak. What are you in the mood for? What would really help my mood is to talk to Blair. Let me use the walkie-talkie for a second. I have been slaving over a hot stove for you, and all you can say is that you want to talk to Blair? Sometimes you can be so selfish. You have absolutely no appreciation for what I've been doing for you. I've been chopping the spinach and sautéing the onions and shucking the oysters. I'm starting to think maybe you're not worth shucking for. You're right. You're right, I'm not. I'm not worth a shuck. <laughs> you know, I am selfish, Margaret. And I always have been. It runs in my family. I don't want to hear about family. No, you family. do want to hear. You should hear. I mean, uh, do you really want to pass on uh, selfish, rotten genes uh, to a child? Think about that, Margaret. Oh, well, I am. I really am. And guess what I think? You are going to eat the oysters, and you are going to impregnate me, and you are going to like it. Or else, Blair is dead meat. <laughs> Tonight, so we thought we'd have dinner here with him. I think it's a great idea. Natalie, I'm so happy that you found happiness again. Well, you know, Christian, he's he's always going to be in my heart. Mm -hmm. I I still miss him. You know, there are days when I think about that horrible man who came to town and pretended to be him, who made us try to believe that Christian had come back. Listen, that's all in the past now, Carlotta. None of that matters. Christian's in a much better place. Peace. Yeah. You know, and that's all because we've all accepted that he's gone. And he's never coming back. And nothing that imposter could do could ever change that. And you know what? I know in my heart that Christian is looking down and he is smiling at me. And he is so happy. I have found love again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Natalie, I know you hate me. And I understand. Oh, I don't need your understanding. Or your approval. I'm sorry. If I were in your shoes, I'd hate me too. Then why did you do this to me? I mean, what kind of a monster are you? If you knew how sick and cruel this was, why didn't you just tell me the truth? 
I couldn't. Why did you make me think that Christian came back to me? Ellie, I couldn't tell you the truth because I was confused. You know, most of the time, I, I didn't even know why I was doing the things that I did. Those people on that ship really messed up my mind. But you knew that you were Christian, didn't you? You knew and, uh, you didn't do anything. So why don't you try to figure out who you really were or get some help? I'm so sorry. I told you in that letter. Oh. Oh, you think a letter is going to make up for everything you did to me? That by giving me back Christian's ring, that that was going to erase everything that you've done? My God! You stole a man's identity. You took everything of his and tried to make it your own. You played with my life. Our lives. Princesa, no llores. No llores. to me. I, I, I didn't. Then why did you say it? I, I mean, don't, don't tell me that was some sort of coincidence because, I mean, those were the exact words Christian used to say to me in Spanish. I, I don't know. You know, the, the people that, that held me prisoner, the ones that tried to turn, turn me into Christian, they might have told me. It must have been inside my head somewhere. How did they know what Christian used to say to me in private when it was just the two of us alone? I don't know. Look, Natalie, I don't understand what they did to me any more than you do. Oh, even now. I know that you're not Christian, but... man's gone, Natalie. I'm not him. I know. But what I don't understand is, um, you were given memories of Christian who were supposed to be made into Christian. But the moments you were most like him had nothing to do with memories. It was always this look on your face when you walked across the room. When you kissed me. I mean, how, how did you want to mimic something like that? I mean, was that all a part of the brainwashing? Must have been. It doesn't really matter anyway. I lost Christian once. I had to grieve for him then, and now I'm going to have to do it all over again thanks to you. And I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to live without him. Emily, listen to me. I know you may not believe this, but you know this time we spent together, I really got to know you. And not just what I was told to know, but you, the real you. And you're a strong woman. Stop. No, no, I'm not going to stop. I want you to hear this. You're going to go on with your life. It's going to be a happy one. one. One full of love and children. And a man who deserves you. Mm. No, I already had my chance for that, and that was with Krista. You'll get another chance. For someone else. was supposed to be the love of my life. But I, uh, 
I didn't even realize when some complete stranger took his place. I mean, what does that say about me? What man would possibly want to love a woman like that? I think there's already a man in your life that does. And I'm going to pray that he can make you happy. I don't want your prayers. You got him. Whether you like it or not. I love you. Don't say that to me. That's the one thing I never lied about. I'm never going to forget you. I'm never going to stop loving you. talking to us. She developed a condition called cardiac tamponade, and that's when blood fills the sac surrounding the heart, so the heart can't beat effectively. So, uh, why didn't you take care of it when she was in surgery? Well, there were no indications with our initial testing. It's, it's not uncommon for it to happen after surgery. I mean, it happened very suddenly. How is she now? How is she now? Marcy's still unconscious. We did drain the blood from around her heart. Her heart is beating normally now. I mean, there's every reason to believe that she's going to regain consciousness and recover completely. And if she doesn't, what then? And what if she's incurred brain damage? Brain damage? Michael. We lost valuable time because of you. Why didn't you let me treat her? You know exactly why. Look, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I assure you, Marcy's brain functions are normal. There's absolutely no reason to believe that she's not going to recover completely. We lost valuable time because of you, and you know... Easy, Michael, okay? This is not going to help Marcy. Can I see her? Can I see my daughter? Yes. It's actually the best thing for her right now is to be surrounded by her loved ones. Well, then, Michael, you should go in there first. Frank, go grab yourself a cup of coffee. What were you thinking... Why did you send Natalie to see me? I was hoping you'd tell her the truth about who you really are. Yeah, well, I didn't. And I'm not going to. Don't you get it, McBain? She's better off not knowing who I am. I've already heard her enough already. She needs to forget about me and move on with her life. Are you going to let her do that? Look, I, I need to know one way or the other. I've done a lot of thinking. Trying to figure out what the right thing is to do. And? Yeah, I've made a decision. You know, Todd, don't give up. Stay focused. There's got to be a way to get out of here and save Blair. Yeah, Margaret's never going to let you go unless you have sex with her. Unless... Maybe if you don't actually have sex with her, but you still give her what she wants. Fall for it. 
she may be crazy, but she's not stupid. you there's nobody here are you calling me a liar no but well 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 what how much have you had to drink tonight i can smell alcohol on your breath i had a beer maybe two beers you know no big deal you know i'm totally cohesive and i heard what i heard lady nobody gets in this garage without passing by me besides this is level b the cops had your car towed to level c Okay, so I'm on the wrong level, so shoot me, but I know what I heard. And the voice, she called me a crazy bitch. And that's the inflammation of character, man. Where did you hear the voice coming from? Okay, I heard it from, I think it was like right here. And it was a woman's voice, and it was real nasty. Well, I don't see anybody in here. I'm telling you, I heard what I heard, so open up the trunk. Would you check it out, man? Voila, Oysters Rockefeller. Oh, don't they smell wonderful? Well, if anything is going to get you in the mood, these will. I'll go get the wine. I have no choice. I have to get her pregnant. I can't open the trunk of this car. It's against garage policy. Garage policy? What the hell are you talking about? Besides, I don't have the keys. But, but Look, lady, do you want your car or not? I'm telling you, somebody threatened to kill me! Sure they did. Just get a good night's sleep. Drink lots of water. It'll all work out in the morning. I'll be back to check on her in a while. What's the matter with you? He's not going anywhere near Marcy. But Dad, he's the one to put her in the damn hospital. Well, Listen, she asked for him, Dad. It's obvious they still have feelings for each other. They care about each other. Yeah, and they need each other. Michael being with her is probably the best thing right now. He's right, Dad. You know he is. Fine. But only for a few minutes. Thank you. Man, we have to forget he ever came into our lives. I know. 
You're right. You're right. You have to remember Christian. The real Christian. Only him. The man we loved. What did you decide? Are you going to destroy Natalie's life and tell her I'm really Christian? Or are you going to do the right thing and let her move on? Part of me believes Natalie deserves to know the truth. But then you're probably going to spend the rest of your life behind bars. And that would probably kill her to know that you were alive and she couldn't be with you. I don't think she could take it. I'm telling you, she couldn't. I don't know. But in the end... Decided it wasn't my decision to make. The choice is yours. So you're gonna do what I asked. You're gonna keep quiet. I'm gonna keep your secret. Natalie won't find out from me that you're really Christian Vega. You made the right decision. You'll see. Yeah. Now I just gotta figure out how to live with it. Stay tuned for scenes from the next One Life to Live. On the next One Life to Live. Please, I don't want to die. If you win, I'll have sex with you, I'll give you a baby. Right now, there are three people in this relationship, and that's one too many. Exactly what the real Christian would have gotten me. How would he know? You really don't have any idea who you are, do you?